Good morning from the Oklahoma Insurance Department. My name is Rachel Fan, and I work in the Communications Division here at OID. Thank you so much for joining our Senior Fraud Webinar Series. For your awareness, I do want to mention that this webinar is being recorded. Before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit about what the Oklahoma Insurance Department, or OID, does. OID is a state agency, and we are responsible for regulating the insurance market and enforcing the insurance-related laws of the state. We have an entire team devoted to protecting consumers by providing them with accurate information and timely assistance. We can also help deal with your insurance company if you can't reach an agreement regarding the claim. If you would like to reach out to us for help or if you have any questions, you can call us toll-free at 1-800-522-0071. And you can also visit our website at oid.ok.gov. For today's webinar, you will be able to see and hear us. However, we cannot see or hear you. If you have a question, please feel free to post that in the chat. Down at the bottom of your screen, you will see several options, one of those being chat. And if you click on that, you can type your question there. We will save time to answer all questions at the end of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce Ray Walker. Ray is the Divisional Director for the Medicare Assistance Program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department. Mr. Walker has over 20 years of experience working in and around the healthcare industry, primarily in insurance, and has had the privilege of speaking to groups across the state and around the country. Ray, over to you. Good morning. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, glad you guys could join us for this fifth webinar in our series. This week's topic is going to be protecting your investments. Uh, over the past four weeks, we've had webinars on cyber safety, social security fraud, banking fraud, and contractor and provider fraud. And if you missed any of those, as Rachel said, we are recording these events. So you can get to those recordings on our website. You just go right back to the place on our website where you registered and you can click on those recordings and listen to those. And we'll get to how you get to those in a few minutes. Uh, for those of you who are attending for the first time, really glad that you could join us this morning. Uh, we have two remaining webinars uh, after this one today, and we hope that maybe you'll take the time to go over and register for those as well. And we'll go over the process for how you can register again uh, at the end of the webinar. Wanted to remind everybody that these events are made possible in part through funding that we receive from the Senior Medicare Patrol Grant through the Administration for Community Living. That's the grant that gives us funds to go out and educate seniors on how they can protect themselves from becoming a victim of fraud, waste, and abuse in the Medicare system. It's a huge problem. We lose like $60 billion every year from the Medicare Trust Fund due to inappropriate activities. So it's really important that we educate people and that people take the time to report anything that looks suspicious so that we can try and have an impact on this problem. So. Uh, we'll give you some uh, information about that more at the end of the event as well. But now I want to introduce Jennifer Shaw. Jennifer is an enforcement attorney and coordinator of investor education outreach for the Oklahoma Department of Securities. Jennifer joined the department in 2003 as an intern. After passing the bar exam in 2005, she started working in her current role. Jennifer has an accounting degree from Southwestern Oklahoma State University and received her Juris Doctorate from the University of Oklahoma College of Law. She was Assistant Managing Editor and Note Editor of the American Indian Law Review. Jennifer is a member of the Senior Outreach Project Group for the National Association of Securities Administrators. This project group was responsible for the development of NASAA's Senior Safe Training Program and received the NASAA Outstanding Team Service Award. The project group has also developed law enforcement training for elder financial abuse and training for financial empowerment of women. Jennifer joined the board of the PIABA Foundation in 2019, which stands for the Public Investors Advocate Bar Association. Jennifer has volunteered as education director and director of the American Legion Auxiliary Oklahoma Girls State Program for 17 years. Hey, Jennifer, we're really glad to have you and we look forward to hearing what you have to share. Well, thank you, Ray, and thank you for the kind introduction. That bio seems really long. We've got to cut that in half next time. So um, I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen real quick. Um, 
want to walk everybody through just a little bit about what the Oklahoma Department of Security is, what we do. First, I want to start by thanking everyone for taking the time out of your day to learn a little bit more to help you learn how to protect your investments. I need to just let you know that the views expressed today are my own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the department um, or the Oklahoma Securities Commission. So a little bit about the department. Hey, Jennifer, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. We are seeing your presenter view again. Well, there, there we go. It. Thank are you. We good? We're good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know, Ray. I mean, I'm sure you guys would have enjoyed the presenter view, but we'll go to the one where the words will be bigger. Um, so a little bit about the Oklahoma Department of Securities. We focus on investor protection through the enforcement of the Uniform Securities Act. Um, what does that mean? Basically, it prohibits fraud in securities transactions, uh, requires broker dealers, agents, investment advisors, investment advisor representatives uh, to be registered or exempt from registration and securities are uh, required to be exempt or registered. So what is a security? Let's start with that. It seems like everybody probably has their own definition. Is it a uh, stock or a bond that you hold in your retirement account? What is it? It is. That's a, the main thing. You've probably heard the stock exchange, different things. Those are all securities. But it also can be if somebody comes to your house and tries to get you to give them money to put into some project, you're not going to have to do anything and you're going to get money in return. Maybe it's just a promissory note. Maybe it's just a loan. A lot of those things can be securities and fall within our jurisdiction. And we're here to help you keep your retirement savings, keep your money. So as we go forward, we're gonna talk a little bit more about different types of securities and different types of fraud. So um, one of the reasons we're here and we have seen a great rise over the last few years is that seniors particularly, especially during COVID. Thank goodness we're kind of hopefully seeing the end of that, but they experienced a great deal of loneliness, feeling very isolated. We felt isolated from our family, everyone did. And that made seniors risk of falling victim for scams 30% higher. Some different things that were put out by the, um, all right, am I, um, Hopefully you guys can are just seeing my screen and not the presenter mode. So yeah, it switched over for a second, but now it looks great, Jennifer. Okay, thank you. Um, so some different statistics on why, as you all probably know, and I know everybody has kind of talked about this as the series has gone along, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but the senior age demographic is growing. And on average, there are over 10,000 Americans that turn 65 every day. Um, there are one in five people will be 65 or older by the year 2030. And then of course, isolation. I don't wanna belabor this point, but isolation has and continued to increase. And the older the individuals have become, the more socially isolated. So all of this has led to uh, a lot of cases of senior financial exploitation. What does that mean? Now, what are the things in Oklahoma to be a senior technically for financial exploitation? The age is 62. Now, I think that's very young, um, uh, but that is the age that the state legislature has said that that's a senior, 62 and up, just so you know. Um, but financial exploitation is the misuse of money or property belonging to another person, exploitation of a senior citizen usually involves someone the senior knows, a family member, a caregiver, attorney, financial professional. Fraud may also be perpetrated by a stranger, a telemarketer. We all get those calls. Um, so one thing to note though, sometimes there's just bad financial decisions that are made. Those don't necessarily rise to the level of exploitation. So why are seniors really the target of this exploitation. One, like it or not, as all of us age, sometimes we have an increased or an impaired financial decision making that occurs with aging. Two, a lot of times seniors are just more trusting to strangers. Greater social isolation. You're also more likely to be at home. And Unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately for you, if you save correctly, et cetera, there's more assets that you might have to exploit. 
so sorry, my office phone is ringing and I'm not really sure how to mute it. So, um, primary risk factors of isolation in adults 50 plus. One is living alone, mobility issues, major life transitions, socioeconomic status, Others being a caregiver for someone with severe impairment, psychological or cognitive vulnerabilities, location, rural, more isolated, unsafe, inaccessible neighborhood, have a smaller social network. Perhaps it's a language barrier. This can all lead to isolation, um, which can be triggered by a loss of your social network, physical health, mental health, your social roles may be changing. You may have less resources. You may have lost a loved one. Other vulnerability factors for the senior exploitation. You maybe have found yourself being responsible for an adult child, grandchild, or other family member. You may be getting pressure from children, caregivers, and others to share money, change a will or trust. Have you recently lost a spouse or partner? Social isolation or recent change in health. You may have a greater dependence as you've aged on have someone providing care, transportation or other services. There might be an excessive worry about money. You might just start feeling like there's just not enough. So you're looking for some way, some way to help pay those bills, do the things you want to. Frequent mistakes in managing your money or just feeling overwhelmed by the household budget and investments. So these are all just vulnerability factors. They may not be for you. They may be for a friend of yours. You may have seen this in somebody else and you may just want to reach out and help them. Warning signs that those friends may be becoming exploited. You, suddenly there's a new family member or there's someone that's inserted themselves in the, that senior's life and they act like family to extract money. There's a new overly protective friend or caregiver and suddenly you, your friend that you've gone to lunch with every week since you were young, no longer is allowed to talk to you. Fear of a sudden change in feelings about somebody, your friend may be, have become scared of you. A lack of knowledge about financial status or reluctance to discuss financial matters. A change in spending habits, or you find out that a family member may have changed their will or trust or beneficiary designation, it just doesn't make sense. Maybe you learn that they've been surrendering passwords to financial accounts or control the financial accounts to this new friend or partner or caregiver. There's unexpected, maybe you're helping somebody with their checks and suddenly you see unexpected checks in large amounts or unexplained loans or disappearance of assets. Maybe there's suspicious signatures on seniors checks or unexplained large withdrawals. So, now that we've known some signs, we've learned, hey, this, this could be a sign that we need to look further. So let's talk specifically about why we're here for this presentation. And this is investments in different types of investment fraud. So these are some of the common scams and schemes that our office sees. One of the main ones is unregistered persons. So for unregistered persons, what that means, and we talked about this earlier, is for a firm or individual to sell securities or provide you investment advice, they're required to be registered with the Oklahoma Department of Securities before they can legally offer you services in this state. So there's ways to check that registration, and I now want to play a video for you that will walk you through um, more in depth what that means. So we're going to start this video, and hopefully everything will work. The Oklahoma Department of Securities InvestEd program has provided this information as a service to investors. InvestEd does not recommend any particular investment strategy or plan, any type of product, or any securities professional over another. No part of InvestEd shall be taken as investment and or legal advice. Researching your registered securities professional. Before you give any of your hard-earned money to a securities professional, First, determine the following. One, is he or she registered to make securities transactions in your state? Two, does the broker dealer, investment advisor, agent, and investment advisor representative have a disciplinary history? Enforcement actions are taken against registered securities professionals for multiple reasons, including unethical sales practices. 
The securities industry has some unique terminology that I will use throughout this video. Here are some helpful definitions. Broker-dealer means an individual or entity engaged in the business of affecting transactions and securities for the account of others or for the person's own account. Agent means individual other than a broker-dealer who represents a broker-dealer in affecting or attempting to affect purchases or sales of securities or represents an issuer in affecting or attempting to affect purchases or sales of the issuer's securities. Investment advisor means an individual or entity that, for compensation, engages in the business of advising others, either directly or through publications or writings, as to the value of securities or the advisability of investing in, purchasing, or selling securities, or that, for a compensation and as part of a regular business, issues or promulgates analyses or reports concerning securities. Investment advisor representative means an individual employed by or associated with an investment advisor who makes any recommendations or otherwise gives investment advice regarding securities or manages accounts or portfolios of clients. There are three websites you can visit to research an investment advisor or broker dealer. First, BrokerCheck. BrokerCheck, sponsored by FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, is an online portal that contains information on broker dealers and agents and limited information regarding investment advisors and investment advisor representatives. What can we learn on BrokerCheck? You start by entering in the name of the individual or firm. When you search for an individual, you can then see the following information. The name of the associated firm, whether or not the individual is registered in your state, how many years he or she has been in the securities industry, what securities licensing exams has the individual passed, what disclosures are available about this individual. You can check and see if the individual is licensed in your state by selecting the state licenses and you can see the list of states in which he or she is registered. If you look at the individual's history, you can determine his or her employment history. An individual that has jumped from firm to firm over a short period of time may be a red flag. If you select the box labeled exams passed, you can see which securities exams the individual has passed. A disclosure is information concerning a customer dispute or disciplinary event. Disclosures may be seen as a warning of a danger or problem with the agent. Some of these items may not have been resolved at the time of the broker check report. Therefore, not all disclosures are an indication of wrongdoing on the part of the individual. Some individuals might have a broker check report like this. You would certainly want to click on disclosures. Then you might see the following information. You could then view the specifics of each disclosure. If you want to look up a firm on BrokerCheck, you can see information about the states in which the firm is registered, any regulatory disclosures, and how long it has been registered. The next website you can visit is the Investment Advisor Public Disclosure on the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission website, www.advisorinfo.sec.gov. This is also linked with BrokerCheck. The information available is similar to that on BrokerCheck. You can enter the name of the individual or firm, the zip code of the business address, click on search, and you will find a link for further information. The detailed report is the most comprehensive and includes information on employment and registration history and disclosures. Another website you can visit is your state securities commission website. For example, in the state of Oklahoma, you can visit securities.ok.gov. Select, is your securities professional registered? You can enter the firm or individual's name. You may also want to see if your securities professional or firm has had any enforcement action taken in your home state. For example, from the Oklahoma Department of Securities homepage, you can select all enforcement actions. If you wish to file a complaint against a securities professional or firm in the state of Oklahoma, select click here to file a complaint and then follow the instructions. Because state securities regulators may be able to provide more information on prospective securities professionals than found online, investors may want to contact their state securities regulator first. 
you can contact the Oklahoma Department of Securities at 405-280-7700. Thank you for watching. All right. I hope the Oklahoma every, Department Oh, we'll go on to the next. So I hope everybody found that uh, helpful. Just a little bit of information. Here is again the SEC version. These are also linked from our website. Uh, but you can go there and look at investment advisors. I know there's a lot of information there, a lot of terms. Um, all of these videos, the video that I showed you and many others can be found on our website. And I will go to the over that website address for you. We also have documentary series, um, different things that you can watch that are very um, nicely produced to help you protect yourself. So just again, uh, to reiterate, here's where you would find information on investment advisors. And here's a screen for broker dealers or broker check. These are actually linked now. So if you can just remember one or the other or just securities.ok.gov, you can get there and find this information. So we were talking about common scams and schemes in the uh, investment related. So another one is your investment professionals. Those people that are registered, we've learned you can look them up. You can look at their disclosure. That's what that went to. See if you're comfortable, maybe none of them, they don't have disclosure. Maybe they have disclosure and it's related to something that is not going to bother you at all. But you've looked them up, you feel like you're comfortable with them. So one of the things that they are required to do, and why it's so important that they're registered, is they have certain standards that have to be met. We have different people that go out and examine their books and records and examine things that they're doing to make sure they're meeting those standards in your account. So sometimes we've had problems with firms or individuals who sell securities or provide investment advice um, before they can legally offer their services. So they're not quite registered yet. Uh, or they may not be adhering to those ethical practices that we're going out for in the performance of their duties. So we've gone out, we've seen that. For examples could be um, that they're doing things in your account like unauthorized trading. You haven't authorized that, but they're still going in and trading in your account or they're charging unreasonable fees that you may not even notice, but we go out and see um, that those fees are there, or they're churning, they're just constantly buying and selling within your account. Or maybe they've just made an unsuitable recommendation that didn't meet with what you felt like your different investment objectives were, or maybe there was outright deception. Those, so those are all things and why it's so important that you're looking for those registered people because then we're going out and making sure that they're doing the right things in your account. Another type of scam or scheme that we see is Ponzi schemes. This is probably one of the most popular things that you have probably heard. I think everybody may have heard the term Ponzi scheme. The biggest national Ponzi scheme was Bernie Madoff. Um, then this just means that the earlier investors are paid with money raised from later investors. There's really not an underlying business or product. There's also affinity fraud. Now this is usually big um, and, and all types, all of these they are frauds that we see aren't necessarily isolated. It's just a Ponzi scheme or it's just infinity fraud. So affinity fraud just really means that some individual has gone out and targeted an identifiable group and attempted to blend in and gain your trust. They may have gone to a church group and tried to blend in. They may go to a local group meeting. They may be, we have a video, one of those documentaries where a young man this scene at the end of it is actual footage of the pitch and he's in a, a white shirt with a button shirt that's open and he's very casual. Well, he was targeting very um, varied people from the community, but they were meeting in the back of an auto body shop at that point in time. So he was trying to blend in, look like everybody else in the room to try to get those monies. Um, of course, we've talked about this. You want to make sure that the person selling you the security is registered, but one of the frauds we often see is unregistered persons or products in the offering. Uh, the person may be selling, may be licensed in other capacities or may use some kind of fancy initials after their name, but are they licensed to sell investments? Are they licensed to sell securities? And also you need to check and make sure that the thing that they're offering, the product that they're offering is registered properly licensed, or if the product may be exempt, but those are all things that ultimately, this is all information you can call and check with our office. Another big scam that we've seen is private placements. Um, 
part of the time, I'm not saying that private placements are bad. Private placements can be legitimate. They have a lot of information in there, a lot of things. They tell you about the risk of loss, how they're going to use your money, how liquid your funds will be. Can you transfer your investment? What the company is about, the management of its background. But they also can be bad. You just, if somebody comes with a private placement, you need to take the time to read through that. They're selling you shares of stock or an interest in a company such as a warrant and bond. And you need to make sure before you invest in this that you are okay. You know the different risks that are associated, that you know um, that something could happen and you could lose all of your money. So you just need to take some extra time there. Know that usually these have a higher degree of risk. Also, we see a lot of what we call promissory note schemes. This is some form of debt, an IOU. Um, the company is trying to raise money and they're going to pay you back later, maybe at a 10% over the next year or 20%. You need to make sure to look at this. Um, the investor, as the investor, you're agreeing to loan the company money for a set amount of time in exchange for them to pay you a fixed rate, uh, typically a principal plus annual interest. Again, these can be legitimate, but they're also marketed broadly and sometimes to individuals and they can turn out to be scams. We see a lot of these that are scams. So make sure when you are looking at these and thinking about investing, just make sure you are comfortable. You're comfortable that you're going to give that money. You don't need that money to, to pay your mortgage the next month or, or whatever it might be. Just know that there's a high, higher degree of risk. Um, everybody has probably watched the news and heard of different types of scams, uh, metals, these are commodity investment. Metals.com was a very, very big scam that was multi-state. Um, one of the things that metals.com did was they got a lot of investors to put their money in a self-directed IRA. If you haven't heard of that, that's taken out of the secured IRA into a company that is self-directed. You give them the money so you don't for tax purposes, et cetera, but they, they give you statements. They make it look like the money is still there However, they have taken that money, the self-directed IA, and they've given it on to the third-party company. So in this case, metals.com got the money. Um, they were then able to use the investor's money for whatever they wanted and just report it back to that self-directed IRA. Oh, yeah, we promised them it was a 10% note yearly, so they're getting their 10%. You can see this, but and ultimately the money was pretty much gone. There was um, approximately 140 and 40 million of alleged defrauded money that came out of retirement funds in this metals.com case. So just be careful, understand the product, um, make sure if you are comfortable with the self-directed IRA, make sure you understand what that is if you're being asked to transfer your funds to that type of account. Another big thing that we've seen um, recently is cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency is things like Bitcoin. You've probably heard of that term. You take your money um, out of this bank account that's regulated. That's the key word there. Your bank account has regulations, different things on who can access your funds, how it's all set up. And you take your money and you put it out on the web to this cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, coin exchange. And then this, we, we've seen more and more fraud uh, regarding this lately where they are targeting seniors and they're having them get their money out there. Well, once you get it into those type of exchanges, the regulations are basically gone. There is not really any regulation, no security for your money. You could lose your password. Somebody else, you, they might talk you into giving them the ability to access your crypto account in, just in case. Or one case that we had, they had somebody transfer it to a crypto account and then transfer it to another one. And by the time it went to that second one, all all of her access was gone. She had no ability to access those funds. So cryptocurrency, um, again, in my opinion, it's a very scary world. There are some people that use it, but just know that it's a very high degree of risk if you cho choose to go that route too. So one of the things we always tell people, what can you do to help protect yourself? Well, one of the things you can do is when you get those brokerage statements in, those investment statements, is you learn how to read them. So I wanted to talk to you just a little bit, just a very general overview about what you're looking for on that brokerage statement. So the brokerage statement, it's just really, it's a snapshot of time. It's the value of the account, the transactions that have occurred. You can get it monthly, quarterly, annually. That'll depend on the type of account. It helps you keep track of your invest investments um, and reports all transactions during that period. 
one of the things to look for, look at the appearance test. Um, has that statement, does it look like it's been altered? Does it look like it's not quite right? Make sure you know your statement period. Make sure you know when that's coming in. Um, that will help you also to gauge what, um, if that brokerage statement looks okay. Now, different things you wanna look for as you're reading it. Account information. Did it identify the correct account number? Um, did that account number match your previous statements? Is there a wrong or outdated address? Um, make sure you're looking at that. Make sure you look at your contact information. Is that correct? Is it, does it appear the same throughout? Does it have um, contact information for your financial professional generally on the first page? And it should also have a clearing firm. And what a clearing firm is, is it's simply the brokerage firm that maintains the custody of the securities or cash. So you may work with one, but then you get a statement from somebody else. And that could be just because that's your clearing firm. But if you have questions on that, call your financial professional. Ask them why you're receiving that brokerage statement, why, why that name is on there. The brokerage statement is also going to provide you with an account summary. Uh, you can look at this. It shows you the big picture. Uh, look at that and see if there's anything that looks unrealistic or something that's occurred that you didn't authorize. An income summary um, shows your income, the amount uh, is earned at source and may be consolidated into account summary, deposits, withdrawals. Your statement is also going to show the fees. This is going to show how much you're paying for your money to be managed. Or managed. And don't make sure not to ignore this. Make sure those fees look the same. They may include commission. Does that seem excessive, unusual? Is there something happening there that you want to question? It's going to include your account activity, trades going in, out. Look for things like, does it look like there's churning? Does it look like there's way more transactions than you've authorized? It's going to show if you're on margin. Margin is a loan from the brokerage firm secured by the securities you purchased. Um, that sometimes leads to a higher degree of risk in your account. Did you want to be on margin? Make sure to look at that. Portfolio detail it may show the individual assets of your account, include the breakdown, and then it's going to have different disclosures and definitions. All of those will be on your brokerage statement. So those are all things just to take a moment, look at, look, does this look right? Do, do I have more questions? Do I want to ask questions? You're, you're ultimately, we're talking about fees. You're paying that financial professional to manage your money. Do you have questions? Do you want to ask them? Is there something really concerning? Do you want to call our office and have us look at it? We're here to help you. We can do that. So we kind of started today talking about helping and how to help others and then how isolation has led seniors to be a more prominent class, a more prominent class. So I want to give you some steps. These, you may have seen all these and say, well, I'm good. My account's good. I, I don't have any issues, I don't think, but I know my friend down the street and she hadn't really been able to get out more, much or, or different things. So let's talk about how you might be able to help those isolated people. First, one of the main things is doing what you're doing today. You're educating yourself about the latest scams, and then you can share that information with your friends and family members. You're researching. Um, research has shown that individuals who have uh, heard about scams are less likely to become a victim. So you're doing the right thing and share this information. At the end of today, Rachel is going to uh, email you a brochure that has a lot of the materials that we discussed today, a lot of the warning signs, a lot of the different discussion. And so you're going to get that information. If you want a hard copy, you can email me. We can get you that as well. We want to make sure that those people are staying connected. You're helping people. So how are you going to help make sure they stay connected? Maybe schedule a consistent recurring communication with them. A lot of you have probably already done this or schedule family events like dinners, movie dates, coffee dates different things. Um, or if it's somebody in your community, just stop by their home and check on them if possible. I know it's, it was harder, but hopefully again, we're, get, we're getting out of that and we're going to try to help, help our neighbors and friends and family members. So now let's say that you've noticed somebody that has became a victim or you think they are a victim and you want to help them. How do, how do you do that? One of the ways that you can do that is reporting the problem. Now, one of the frightening facts that I have seen is that when it is important to report because only one out of 44 financial exploitation cases is reported, that's right, one out of 44, whether it's because we don't want to interfere in somebody's business 
what it might be. So we encourage you to report. Uh, again, abuse in seniors are three times more likely to die prematurely, and elder abuse victims are four times more likely to go to the nursing home. Senior abuse is public health, and it has to be reported. So let's report your suspicions. How do you do that? Well, one way to do that is consider talking to the potential victim. Try to get as much information as possible from them, and then report those suspicions. Ways to report? Obviously, Adult Protective Services is uh, especially if there is some kind of abuse or neglect, call them. Call this number. This is the state um, abuse hotline for adult protective services and report. But if it's something that you have a question with, securities related, um, or if you have a question in your account, you can report that to us. Now, how do you do that? You're going to call our phone number or you're going to go to our website. So our main number is here on the screen, 405-280-7700. Our website, securities.ok.gov, is here. And then um, we also have, and this is linked to the main, but we have a lot of investor education resources. And I think we may have just a little bit of time, so I might be able to show you that website. Um, now, one of the ultimate things to remember from today, and I know it sounds simple, but it, it is so important, is this. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So remember that as you are going forward and looking at these different types of investments or giving somebody access to your money. So now I'm going to try to hopefully, uh, hopefully you can see my screen uh, and it looks like just a blank website. I'm going to go to our securities website. We talked about it. it it's securities.ok.gov. And this is all of those actions that we've been taking, different things. If you have somebody that came and talked to you about investing, maybe look for their name here first. If not, just you just want more information for yourself. Our investor education site is right here. There is, we talked about all of those education materials, those videos. There's all kinds of different resources right here. All these instructional, instructional videos. Uh, the one that we saw today, different things about how to research stock, what is investing, what are indexes, all different things that you can look at and learn. The documentaries that I mentioned are here at the top. There, As you will see, there are four different documentaries. If anybody is interested in looking at these, they're all linked on the website here. So these are all there for you to review and look at. And then there's just some tips specifically for seniors that are on the website and other short videos that you can watch there that will that will be able to help you out and as you look for things. Um, the main thing to remember though is if you have an issue, if you have a concern, call our office. Um, we're, we're here to help. So call our office and we will try to help you out and make sure that what you are seeing um, is okay. If you feel comfortable, if you have questions, concerns about your investments, we are here to help you. So I want to give this back to Ray, but before I do, hopefully I can get this to go to the next slide. I'm, apparently it doesn't like me right now, but um, I was trying to get to your last slide, Ray, to give them information on the upcoming webinars. So if you guys would like to see these upcoming webinars, we encourage you to go there. Um, they're great information. We thank the insurance department every year for putting these together, but there's a link there. And I know Rachel will share that too with you on how to get to the webinars. So at hey. this point in time, Ray, it's, it's all you. Thank you. Uh, this was excellent. I love the new website. I think that this is probably, I deal with fraud all the time. This is the area that I probably feel the most fearful of because it can be so incredibly confusing. And it's especially scary for seniors because, you know, they've retired. They are, their income is fixed. They're probably not, uh, you know, they're not getting a paycheck anymore. So what they have to invest is, is it. So we do sometimes Here's some some real scary stories. Um, I had a couple of questions for you. The uh, case in point 
we had heard, and I think I'd shared this with you, this has been a few years ago, there was an individual who had lost her uh, spouse and a friend, they, they, they had some investments and this particular individual, she did not know her husband had handled those things. So a friend had gone with her to visit uh, an attorney that they had heard of that uh, provided some support. And so the individual drove this woman to the appointment. Uh, the end of they they uh, took the lady back to go visit with the attorney. And then at some point, another representative of the office came out and informed the friend that she could go ahead and go on home, that they would take this lady home and that she really needed to go ahead and leave. And it 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 concerned this friend because she felt like that that possibly something could be going on, but she really didn't have a lot of evidence. Is that something that she would have that would be justified for her to report to adult protective services? Um, I, I think it would. And also, I think that that's something that our office might be interested in, in as well, because it is. Um, Although we will both look into it, it may just be it may be everything was fine, but if if you have that sense that discomfort, you're just trying to help that friend. And I think you are justified in reporting that um, an example we have had within the last 3 or 4 years. We had a elderly person who lost their spouse. Uh, the spouse's funeral was out of state. She went out of state and her financial advisor actually followed her out of state, followed her to the funeral talked her the night before the funeral into changing all of her investments. Luckily, it was reported. The firm caught it. The individual was dismissed. He can no longer be licensed to sell securities, but these things happen. We want to think that that people are there and and we want to trust them, right? We all we all have an innate instinct that we want to trust people, but I think it's good to to help your friend to question those things as well, because there are unfortunately bad people out there. Yeah, and I would encourage anyone who has not seen uh, Jennifer referenced the videos they have on their invest ed website and those are they're scary, but they are so informative because they do a really great job of illustrating how the bad guys in these videos don't look like bad guys. They are everyday people in the community that these people know that they they interact with on a daily basis. So. Uh, I, I strongly encourage you, if you have not seen those, to go out there and look at those uh, websites. Next question. Um, is there, you know, a lot of times we, we, we talk to our friends, we talk to acquaintances. So who do you use for this? Who mows your lawn? You know, who painted your house? Those sort of things. And we, we, we put some value in that one of our known uh, friends has referred us to this person. And sometimes we get the same thing with financial advice. And, you know, if someone, they may not feel comfortable going on and doing all of this research and, and looking at stuff on the internet. Uh, I've had people say, well, he's been in business for 10 years. Is there any value to that? If a person's been in business for 10 years, does that, is there like a time frame within which you would think that that would be legitimate or? Boy, that's that's a a great question, um, and I I may be a little bit skeptical just because of the amount of fraud that I have seen. But uh, just because they've been in business for ten years and they may have been selling this product for ten years or other products doesn't mean that they're licensed to sell it. It doesn't even mean that they were. It could have been a Ponzi scheme. We've had Ponzi schemes that have lasted for over ten years before they were caught. So just because that that person has been in business and somebody else trusts them and maybe that person got great returns and that could be because they were in at the front end of a ponzi scheme instead of toward the end they got in 10 years ago not recently so i would still encourage you to check them out maybe that person they've been investing with was licensed 10 years ago but they've got some kind of disciplinary history that they have been no longer licensed they're not allowed to because of something they did in somebody else's account they may not have disclosed that to your friend, but that's something you would want to know. There's there's different things. A lawn guy, you're not giving them all of your retirement money or a good chunk of it. You're giving them a weekly sum to mow your yard, 
this we are talking about the money you have saved and are relying on for your retirement and you want to protect that so take that extra step call our office look online if you're not comfortable with looking online again that's why we're here call us and we'll help you okay the the other part of that is sometimes when these people do come out to talk to you about an investment or if you contact them or whatever it is there is a lot of documentation there's a lot of paperwork and it can be very confusing uh, I, that's one of the things that makes it so scary for me is I, if I don't speak this language. Is there a requirement that these documents are at a certain, uh, uh, I don't want to say grade level, you know, something like that so that the, the average person has the ability to understand what they're talking about? Right. Um, and that, that is one of the places where a lot of people struggle and we hear, well, did you get the documents? Yeah, but that's what I'm paying that guy for. Um, I, I didn't have time to look at that. I, um, so while I, I wish the standard is, um, it's a very legal standard. It's what a reasonable person would consider. Um, so sometimes the language does get a little, little bit legalese, a little bit hard to read. And you may have just been given a packet that's over a hundred pages long, right? And you're looking at this, like, what is this? That's, I'm going to trust this person and invest in it. So that's kind of one of those, like we talked about the private placement memorandum, maybe thick, maybe chunky, but there's certain things you want to look at um, and take the time. You don't have to make that investment decision right there at that minute. Take your time, take it home, look at it, talk to some other people. If you have a, a trusted family member that you want to help look at it, or if you have a different financial advisor, a CPA that you want to have look at it, share that information get an understanding of what it is before you put your money in there. Actually, now brokerage accounts are um, requiring you to put a trusted contact on your account. What does that mean? That's just somebody that they can call in case they may have a concern. That person has no access to your money, no ability to do transactions in your account. It's just somebody that your broker might be able to call in case they have concerns. Say you went in one day and say, I want to remove all of my money from this account and transfer it into cryptocurrency. They may say, wait, are you sure? And it's just an extra layer of protection for you. That's what that trusted contact is. Yeah, uh, I, I remember you saying that uh, uh, Elaine Dodd, who we heard speak a few weeks ago, uh, made reference to that, uh, you know, sometimes whenever the person that's trying to sell you something tries to uh, increase that sense of urgency that you've got to act right now. You got to make a quick decision because this mm -hmm. is going to go away. That that's a sure sign that something could be wrong here and that you should never do that. So that is really right. good advice as well. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. This was great. I really appreciate it. Again, I really like the new website. I think it's laid out very easy. Uh, uh, we will, as Jennifer pointed out, we will be sending you that uh, brochure that uh, the folks at the securities, uh, Department of Securities has put together so that you'll have that information. Uh, appreciate you so much, Jennifer, and we look forward to, for those of you who don't know, we're also gonna be doing a live webinar, uh, excuse me, a live event at the Oklahoma Insurance Department in June, where you would have the opportunity to come and listen to Jennifer speak again. Uh, and we'll have more information coming out about that. So stay tuned. You should be getting emails and other, seeing other information about that. Thank you, everybody, for attending our webinar today. Uh, we hope you found the information very useful. Uh, if you know of anyone who could uh, benefit from the information from today's webinar, don't forget, we record each and every one of these webinars. And today's webinar will be available today, later on today, uh, on the website. You just go right back to the site where you registered at OID. Dot ok dot gov forward slash senior fraud and you'll find the link to that recording as well as our past recordings those are there as well and you can share that information with other people who might benefit from those wanted to also remind you next week's webinar uh ethan shane and charles dixon from the oklahoma attorney general's office will be here as our guest speakers they're going to be talking about some of the senior scams that the that the uh, attorney general's office is seeing now and uh, sharing some information with us uh, about that. So if you're not registered for those, again, the, web, the website is the same as the one you go for the recordings, oid.ok.gov uh, forward slash senior fraud. Before we go, I wanna remind you guys once again, uh, Jennifer and I can spend all of our time out here talking about fraud and telling you what the warning signs are, 
but unless you as the consumer report what you're seeing and anything suspicious, if it goes unreported, there's nothing anybody can do about it. So please be a conscientious consumer, take the time to report anything that looks suspicious uh, so that we can, can take action on that. So again, thank you for joining us and we hope everybody has a great week and we hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.